Hello, I'm Patrick Brown, and this is Scripture versus Scripture. Today, we're going to talk about the seed in itself, the seed being in itself. When we look at nature and the world today, the way God has designed everything, we see that things spring from themselves. The seed of the future generations are already contained in the seed of the original. And as the wheat or the corn or whatever it is grows and it sprouts the seeds, the future generations are already self-contained within itself so that it uh, continues to promote more growth and more life from itself. Put already in. See, when God said it is finished on the seventh day of creation, Everything that he had or everything that was going to be in the future was already created from the originals waiting to be born or waiting for that day to uh, sprout forth or come forth from the original. Every man that walks the face of the earth is a descendant of Adam, the descendant of the original man, because the seed was in itself. And as Adam had children and they had children and so on and so on. And, you know, the flood came and then Noah the same thing, so on and so on. The seed was already self-contained. There were no new, new seeds. There were no new creations of human beings. Uh, when we talk about God's work of creation or him and, and starting another creation, uh, as far as human beings are concerned or anything else, it was finished on the seventh day. His work of creation was complete. And as we see plants, trees, flowers, the same thing, vegetables, the seed is always contained in itself. And we're going to find out why this is an important principle and a concept in the Bible. All right. We look at Genesis, where it all began, the book of beginnings. We see in Genesis 1, starting in verse 11, it says this. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and that fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so right so god said that the earth bring forth grass herbs now we're talking about herbs you, you know uh vegetables plants plant life and it said it's going to bear after its kind right now when i said the seed is in itself right the dog seed is in itself the cat seed is in itself the human seed is in itself the human seed is not going to produce a cat the human seed is not going to produce a dog a dog seed is not going to produce a human nor is a wheat seed going to produce corn or a corn seed is going to, the seed is in itself. Corn is in itself. Humans are in itself. Dogs are in itself. Whatever it is, is in itself for the next and future generations of its like kind. See, it says everything after its own kind. All right. All right. After his kind, whose seed is in itself. Then it says, and the evening and the morning were the third day. If we go back further. In the book of Genesis, and we'll see this theme over and over again. God is trying to uh, hammer a point home here. Let us see a spiritual principle, a spiritual truth here. When we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, and it says, And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. After their kind, and every wing file that and every wing file after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God saw and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. In the evening, in the morning, with the fifth day. All right now, look at this. It says, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. All right? Keep reproducing, keep reproducing, keep reproducing. How? Because the seed is in itself to, to, to continue. The population, the, the, the population growth to continue to expand, expand, expand after your own kind, right? So God saw that this was good. The idea of a species reproducing itself, continuing to grow, is a biblical principle, a blessed principle, one that God has ordained from the very beginning and one that God is pleased with. <clears throat> okay. When we look at the book of Let's do the book of Genesis chapter 3. We're going to see one more that we need to talk about. Genesis chapter 3, verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is that that thou hast done? 
And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Now, the famous portion of the Bible with Adam and Eve, Eve being tricked, God now coming down, investigating what's going on, because they didn't put some clothes on here. And uh, <clears throat> God is asking Eve, well, you know, what have you done? All right. And she said, the serpent tricked me, basically. All right. Now. Verse 14, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between, here we go. This is the part that we need to see here. Pay close attention. Now, this is God punishing the serpent for tricking Eve. One of the punishments on the belly that the snake shall go. We see the snake crawling on his belly today. It's being a, a euphemism or a, a poetic talk when it says "bus of dust thou shalt eat," basically means your head is going to be down on the ground. And it says all the days of your life again, you know, snake, don't get up and walk, have no legs. Verse fifteen, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Now, why did I uh, point out this portion of scripture? Well, for the obvious reasons that. Even though plants, animals, and things like that of that nature have seeds, literal seeds uh, that we plant in the ground, if you're a gardener or something like that, the human have a seed too. It's the male. The male carries the seed. It's a sperm, right? So he says, and, and, and the seed grows up once it's planted into the womb, once it's planted into the uterus, once it plants into the egg, the seed which the male carries, okay, it's planted in the good fertile ground of a woman, all right? A biological woman, a womb man. That's another lesson, all right? So he plants the seed, all right? And the seed becomes uh, a human being of the future generations, all right? A seed becomes a, 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 another human being whose seed is also in itself, all right? So, but God himself calls children the seed of man, all right? The descendant of man. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed. Remember, the snake is an animal. So animals have seed and her seed. And, you know, obviously Eve is a human. It said humans have seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his head. All right. And without all contradiction, the least is blessed of the better. All right. Well, who is blessed? In this portion of scripture, we have Melchizedek blessing Abraham. Abraham giving Melchizedek a tie and Melchizedek the greater blessing the lesser Abraham. So it says here, and without contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And, and as I may so say, Levi also which receiveth tithes Levi is the uh, line of priests, the descendants of Abraham, who are the priestly line. Levi, again, is the descendants of Abraham, who are the priestly line, is the seed of Abraham, who is the priestly line. All right. And I may uh, say, uh, and I may so say, Levi also, which received tithes by the Israelites, because this priestly line paid tithes in Abraham. Now, this priestly line also actually paid tithes. How did they pay tithes? While they were yet in Abraham. How do we know this? It goes on. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. All right. He said, yeah. In God's estimation, even though Levi was not born yet, if his father did it, he did it. Why? Because the seed is in itself. If Abraham did something, and since Levi was part of Abraham at the time, Levi was inside of Abraham. If Abraham did it, God sees Levi has having done it. We said it again because the seed is in itself, and Levi, the seed, was in Abraham, his father. When Abraham uh, did something to Melchizedek, Levi had did something to Melchizedek because he did it. He said, "For he was yet in the loins of his father. While he was in his father, he did it." Okay. So notice here, God sees as your father doing something, you did it, all right? Because you were inside your father at the time before you were separated 
when, when the father uh, planted the seed into your mother, until that uh, point in time, you were inside your father. Y'all were one and the same. All right now, this is scripture. This is how God sees it, and you know, God sees it this way. This is the way it is. This is why this is important. Why this is important? Now let's continue and get to the book of Romans. Romans chapter five. Verse 12, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all being sin. Wait, wait a minute. This one man, wherefore, there's one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Well, we know Adam was the uh, originator of the sin for mankind, for man, and death by sin, death pa uh, passed on to all men because of Adam's sin, all right? For that all have sinned, and then it's telling you why. When Adam sinned, Everybody sinned. Why did everybody sin when Adam sinned? Because the seed is in itself. And God sees it as when Adam did it, since we were in him as the seed, we all did it. We all did it at the time Adam did it. See, it's telling you clearly here, this is called imputed sin. Imputed sin. Some people don't believe in imputed sin, but people don't believe in imputed sin does not understand the concept of the seed being in itself and the, the concept of God's sin you as being in your father at the time anything happened before you were separated to your mother uh, by the, him, him planting the seed into her womb. Before this appointed time, before this time, every individual were inside of the father, which means when the father did something, you did it as well. It is clear here in verse 12. Let me read it again. Wherefore, as one by one man's Adam sent into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all had sin. For unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Imputed means passed on. Sin is not passed on or inherited when there's no law. Okay. Now, when I say the punishment for sin, anyway, sin is imputed because death came upon all men. So death was passed upon all men. So that means it was imputed. But what they're trying to say here is the physical punishments of it, not the spiritual punishments of it. Nevertheless, this reign from Adam to Moses, see, nevertheless, death reign is telling you death reign from Adam to Moses because all had sinned through Adam, even over them which had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even though you did not physically eat the fruit, you still sin in Adam. Even though you didn't physically do the very same thing Adam did, right? God still imputed that sin to you, all right? Even though over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure? Uh, who is a figure of him to come? That figure of him to come, Adam is just a uh, precursor to the coming of Christ. Who, through his righteousness, here we go. This is the lesson. Who through his righteousness saved everyone? All right. He is the called the the second Adam. All right. The second Adam. Well, what does this mean? Well, through his righteousness. All can be saved. How can all be saved through his righteousness? Because this is imputed to everyone through Christ. You know, it's like if ever that's why I say if any man be in Christ, a seed is in is originated, the seed is in the Father. All right. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Right. If you are in Christ, if the seed is in your father, Christ, okay, when he became righteous, when he became righteous, when he kept the law perfectly. You kept the law perfectly. Let me say that again. All right? If the seed is in itself and Christ is our spiritual father, all right, and we are spiritually joined to Christ and we have accepted his blood, okay, and you become his child, a child of God, you become the seed of Christ, okay, and if the seed is in the father, if the seed is in the originator, when Christ kept the law perfectly, you kept the law perfectly. When Christ died on the cross for your sins and, and paid the punishment, uh, what did it do? you know, paid the punishment for sin, which is death. You paid the punishment for sin, all right? It, it, it was satisfied because when he did it, you did it. That is the whole principle and point of a seed being in itself, letting you know that when your father did it, whether it was physical Adam or spiritual Christ, it was completed. It was completed in you. You were uh, it, you when he did it. You did it, all right? Impute, imputation, imputation. Let's look at Mark. Chapter 12, verse 37. <clears throat> and the question here is, 
right? I'm 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 gonna I'm I'm start in verse 35 here, Mark chapter 12, verse 35. And Jesus answered and said, While he taught in the temple, how say he describe that Christ is the son of David? But David himself said, By the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself called him Lord, who Christ. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Now, the question is here. Every son in the Bible called their father Lord, all right? Each son, each progressive generation is lesser than the generation before because each father is inhaled in higher esteem over the son. The son called the father Lord. The, the father doesn't call the son Lord. So the question is here. How did David call Christ his son through generations Lord? That's backwards. How did they, he said, how say they describe that Christ is the son of David? Say, well, the scribe say that Christ is the son of David through generation. For David himself said, by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand till I make the enemies a footstool. They were therefore himself called him Lord. So, wait a minute. How can Christ be David's son if David is calling his son Lord? Because in order for Christ to be David's Lord, Christ has to be before David. David had to descend from Christ, right? So, so Jesus is tripping him up there, but he's letting him know that Christ was predates David. Christ is before David. And also David to call Christ Lord, Christ had to come before Lord. David had to be the seed of Christ. But at the same time, since Christ is a man, he is the seed of David. But spiritually, since Christ is God, David is the seed of... Amen. I hope I didn't confuse you there. This deep, he's he trying to he trying to let them know something. They're trying to let the scribes, Pharisees, see something, but it went right over their head. They couldn't understand something spiritual because they were so wrapped up in the karma. All right, now <clears throat> in John chapter eight, verse fifty-eight, it says this: the Gospel of John. Uh, again, I'm gonna back up. This is all good, so I gotta back up and get everything. I want nobody confused. I want this lesson to translate home about the seed, the father and the seed. The seed is in itself. All right. Your father Abraham, it's 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, Christ speaking. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Abraham being dead and gone. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And am means eternal. But he's letting them know, look, I was before Abraham. I'm Abraham's father. Abraham descends from me. I'm David's father. David descended from me. I'm God. What he wanted to know again, again, I'm not sure if it hit home. I'm not sure they could comprehend the fact what he's telling them. All right. Now, when we go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. A lot of good scripture here. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 says this. For ye are all the children of God by faith in how? If you're in Christ, you're the children of God if you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, you are his seed. <laughs> the seed is in itself. If you are in, that's why I say you got to be in Christ. You got to not, can't know of Christ, all right? But you got to be in Christ, all right? We, we are the church of God in Christ, all right? We're the followers of God in Christ. We've got to be born again in Christ. Okay, there you go. We've got to be born again. Born again, spiritual birth. First birth was a natural birth. The second birth, a spiritual birth. And if you're born in Christ, not of the flesh, not of Adam, but born in Christ, that you are his seed, all right? It's telling you the children of God are the seed of Christ, all right? All right? Let's go to... Uh, Galatians chapter, I did three and twenty six. Uh, let's go to Romans. Go back to Romans. Romans chapter five, verse nineteen. <clears throat> right, this is where Christ comes in. This is what the the whole crux of God's plan. The whole crux of God's plan is understanding the fact that the seed is in itself. Romans five, verse nineteen says, "For as by one man disobedience, Adam, were many, many were made sinners. So by the obedience." 
of one Christ shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. All right. The law entered that the offense might abound. My offense might be recognized and the offense might be punished. All right. He said, but grace came. Christ, because Christ grew. The law, right? The law brought, brought about death. Grace in Christ brought about life. All right. For, for, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's Christ. You look down. For what sin abounded, grace did much more abound because sin was everywhere. God's grace had to spread everywhere even more because sin was everywhere. God's grace had to spread everywhere even more. And that grace came through Christ Jesus. All right. Now, but we see the point here that by one man in obedience, what happened? And by one man's righteousness and one man's obedience, what happened? That's why Christ came. He's the anti-Adam. He undid everything Adam did. All right. Last but not least, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Again, the seed is in itself. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 17 to 21. The seed is in itself. And it says this. Therefore, if any man... He, excuse me. Here we go. It says this. Therefore, if any man be what in Christ, there's a if. There's a big. There's a big little word there. If I if if any man, no matter who it is, black, white, Asian, uh, uh, no, no matter what, where you're from, what part of the world, all right. So, it says, if any man be where in Christ, again, if you are part of the original. He is a cre new creature. If any man be in Christ, if the seed is in the original, you are a new creature through Christ. All right? He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, whom have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We were once separated from Christ through the sin of Adam, we are now reconciled to Christ by his son and God himself, reconciling us to himself through him, in him. How? When Christ did it and reconciled and, and, and satisfied the statutes of the perfect law, when he did it, all of us who are in him did it as well, and God satisfied God's prerequisites for us. I say God, Christ, satisfied the Father's prerequisites for us. And through him, we are saved. Through him and his sacrifice, we are saved. I hope that lesson hit home. I hope that lesson was a blessing. That the seed is in itself. We are new creatures in Christ. If any man be in Christ, the seed is in itself. And we are the family of God, the children of God in Christ and in Christ. We have fellowship with the Father again and are saved. Let us bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for a sacrifice for us. We understand that only in Christ, only through Christ, only by being born again and being the seed of God, being the children of God, can we be saved. We pray that we walk accordingly and walk in a way that the world can see Christ in us and we work, let him work through us. We thank you. For him and Father, for this lesson, and we pray again that you continue to lead God and help us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.